How's it going, Firebirds Nation? Welcome into another episode of Meet the Bird Gang. I'm your host this evening, Jacob Kronberg, and we have a very special guest on the show, a major leaguer who used to be a Firebird. He's now on the Pittsburgh Pirates starting pitcher, Trevor Williams. Trevor, thanks for taking the time. Of course. Thanks for having me on. Let's get right into things. 2020 has been wonky. Real life, baseball, everything. How has this new kickstarted season been going for you? Uh, so far, it's been great. Um, you know, we're, we're taking a lot of um, precautions with our health protocols to make sure that this kicks off in a timely fashion and we're able to play all 60 games, 60 plus games. So um, the Pirates are doing a great job and I'm sure a lot of teams around the league are doing a great job. Um, you know, the first, the first week was, was tough to adjust um, once we got back to Pittsburgh, but um, it's been pretty seamless since then. And uh, we're just excited to, we're, we're one week away as we're having this interview. I don't know when it's going to air, but we're a week away uh, from opening day. So we're, we're really excited. I think everyone is curious, what's a day in the life of Trevor Williams like right now with this, some social distance protocols you have? <laughs> so right now, so I have, um, I have three, I have three children and they, I, we live in Phoenix in the off season and um, they did not come out um, for the shortened season. Um, my wife and I just made the decision to, to not make the move because a, if, in the event I get COVID, um, it's not fair to them that we all get sick together, um, especially with, I mean, my youngest is six months. So, like, it's just, it's not fair. There's too many unknowns. And B, I'm under a strict uh, social distancing health protocol. Like, I don't want to force that on them where, like, hey, come to Pittsburgh and just stay in the apartment all day. Like, don't do anything, you know. So, um, so they're more comfortable at home. Um, so, the day right now before the season starts, it's, it's – it's just like spring training. Um, you're only at the field for a couple hours and the rest of the day I'm riding my bike around the city and I'm just hanging out and reading and watching some TV at night. How does the weight room at uh, your home field working right now? Are you guys all allowed to be in there? Is it kind of more staggered yeah, time? We've got, um, there's, there's, there's limits of how many people can be in a room at one time. Um, we haven't had any issues with it yet. We, we all walk around with our own squirt bottle and towel to wipe everything down. So it's, uh, it's been fine. There's just, a, there's little adjustments. We have, um, we don't have our kitchen anymore. Our cafeteria. So we all have like a common area to eat at where it's, we're all spread out. Um, the pitchers right now are in the visiting clubhouse. Um, the position players are in the home clubhouse just because we don't have enough lockers where everyone can be spaced out. Um, but, but other than that, you, you figure it out. We're figuring it out. We're rolling with it. The, the health protocols are going to be pretty fluid this season. Um, I imagine it, it's going to change week by week. Um, but other than that, you know, I, I, it's been pretty seamless. So you're back in Pittsburgh with the whole team. And these are, in my assumption, some of your closest friends in the world at this point. These are your teammates. What's it like not really being able to be normal with them, go up and, like, High five one of them, whatever it is. <laughs> we, we, that's been a little bit of an adjustment. You know, the elbow taps are, are in right now. Um, the no, we have a strict no card game policy. Um, so that's been tough. Um, as, as travel gets going and, you know, our, our airplane, our flights are going to look different. Our bus rides are going to look different. Um, but everyone is respectful and everyone understands, like, this is what we have to do. This is what we have to do. So... You mentioned travel is going to be a little different, but it's not as spread out. You're only going to play the NL Central teams you normally have and then the AL Central, different from a standard season. How do you approach the teams and hitters that you might not be so familiar with going into a year? Uh, well, we trust our scouts. <laughs> we trust our scouts and the scouting reports and video that we watch. And, um, you know, you talk to other guys around the league, guys that you've been teammates with, um, on other teams or in college or in summer ball where like if they're in a diff and they're, if they're in a division where you're not playing and you play those guys, you know, you reach out to them and, and try and get some scouting reports from them. But um, it's going to be a sprint, especially the games in the inter the interleague plays those, those games are going to count and it's, it's going to be an interesting sprint this year and it's going to be um, exciting baseball. I believe. We're going to get to those summer ball relationships in a little bit, but it's, a common thought that baseball players and especially pitchers are very superstitious guys, very routine heavy. 
are the new regulations going to affect your routine in a major way in any way? Um, personally, no, I've, I've never been a, a hot tub guy. Um, I rarely go in the cold tub. Um, from that standpoint, no. The only thing that's going to be different is um, I like getting to the field early on a start day, but there's you can only show up at X time, and the gate's not going to open until it is X time. Um, but other than that, you know, my routine is, is my routine, and, and thankfully it hasn't been um, adjusted that much. What's your routine like? What do you, what do you do? You said you're not a tub guy, really. Um, there's, there's like a movement, there's a movement list that I go through, um, like a, a band routine, a heavy ball routine, a hip routine. Um, it's usually, it usually starts about 90 minutes prior to, to start time is when my routine starts. All right. Awesome. Let's transition to your time in Orleans. Mm-hmm. First, I've got a question. Do you know which of your Pirates teammates also played for the Firebirds in college? I played with JT Riddle. You played with JT Riddle? There's another one. Do you know it? I'm trying to think who went to college. Luke Maley? I don't no. believe so. It, it's, one, it's not a pitcher, if you need a hint. If not, we can just let you know. I was curious if you knew. I played with JT Riddle, and that's the only one that I knew. I don't know who else played. Brian Reynolds. Brian Reynolds, that's right. He, that's right. I should have known that. Yeah, I should have known that. All right, so you've got three former Firebirds on your Pirates roster. Have you guys ever talked shop about your Cape experiences? Um, I asked, I asked, I asked Reynolds. Now that now that, I, that you said that it was him, I talked to him a little bit about it. Um, and with JT, I was only his teammate really for a couple of weeks. Um, I was only in in Orleans for about two weeks. Uh, but other than that, you know, it's just it's same experiences that we shared, and and you know, playing that playing at the field and playing at other fields around the Cape. What was your favorite part of that two week stint on the Cape? Man, my favorite part, um, my roommate had a car and he was a big fisherman. So, and I'm not a big fisherman, um, but I wanted to hang out and I wanted to, you know, kind of explore Cape Cod. So we would just find ponds and lakes and go on the shore and just fish all day. And that was, that was a blast for two weeks. You can't talk Orleans without Kelly Nicholson's name coming up. Yeah. He's a Hall of Famer on the Cape. Yeah. What's your relationship like with Kelly? Um, I, good relationship. Um, I heard nothing but great things before I got to Orleans, and everything was um, everything was that and then some um, with him. You know, he's, he's a great dude. He cares about the man, cares about the player, and cares about um, Orleans. Um, we probably text once once at the start of the season, once in the middle of the season, once at the end of the season, just catching up and making, you know, making sure everything's okay. And that he's been watching and asking, um, you know, how things are going. So, um, you know, when he reached out about this, it's like, of course, like when Kelly says, you know, can you do this for me? You have to say yes. I'm glad everyone feels that way. (laughs) (laughs) So you mentioned your teammates with Riddle. Now you spent time with him in Orleans. You also had Matt Boyd and Trevor got just to name a few of the guys who have made it to the major leagues. Are you still in touch with Boyd and Gott at all? I don't know if I played with Boyd my year. I played with Gott. Um, maybe I think Boyd, Boyd came, came late your year. Maybe he came later, yeah. Um, yeah, because he was probably in the College World Series. Um, <laughs> um, but, yeah, I, I, uh, every once in a while, you know, when, when we see him on the uh, – like on the field across the way, you know, you say what's up and you know, catch up a little bit. So, um, but yeah. What was your time in Orleans like with JT now that you guys, I guess have come full circle back to playing together on the pirates. Yeah. So we, so we played with each other in Orleans and then we were drafted together by the Marlins. And then now it's funny. Now we're in the big leagues together with the pirates. So um, it's just funny. It's funny how small the world baseball is. Um, Everyone knows everybody. Everyone's at some point in their career played with somebody that has played with somebody, you know? So um, I think summer ball is a great way to keep that brotherhood small, um, especially in the, in the Cape. All right. So I have to ask, you got any good JT Riddle stories from the college? We don't have to expose major league baseball player, JT Riddle, but college no, baseball player we can. No, um, you know, because my time there was so short, you know, if I stayed there all summer, I'm sure I would have had something for you. But we maybe spent a night or two together where, you know, we kept it pretty tame. All right. K 
Kelly told me I had to ask you about your number you wore in Orleans and why you picked it. Can you go into depth on that story? Yeah, so the number I chose in Orleans um, was number 34, um, which is my big league number now. And um, when I was at ASU my freshman year, um, a teammate of mine, a roommate of mine um, named Corey Hahn broke his neck um, sliding into second base, and his number was 34. And that summer he was supposed to go to, I believe, to it. Um, and he didn't get the opportunity to do so. When I went to Cape Cod, I said, you know what, I'm going to wear his number because now that he, he – if I'm in the Cape with his number, I'm going to be um, – he's, he's going to have the opportunity to be in the Cape as well. So um, that's why I chose 34. Um, same reason why I'm wearing it in the big leagues. You know, I feel like my career is his career as well, um, and we're doing this together. Um, we have a foundation that we started about three years ago called Project 34, where we help assist um, people living with spinal cord injuries, um, like Corey is. Um, and we've we've seen we've seen so much good come out of what we've what we've started just three years ago. And um, every time you know I put on the uniform and I see the number 34, I'm reminded of what um, what happened to him on the baseball field and what what he's going through daily. So um, it's it's a testament to him and it's a testament to everybody who has a spinal cord injury. Well, it's awesome what you guys are doing with Thanks. your donations. It's really nice to see Firebirds, but anybody giving back to the community. I like to, at the tail end of all of these, play a little game called The Cycle. Four levels of questions. They'll kind of get a little more into who Trevor Williams is, if you're up for it. <laughs> okay, let's go. Is it trivia or is it me answering? No, it's, your it's not trivia. No more trivia. Oh, okay, okay. So the single question is going to be, the single best road stadium to pitch in and why? Oh, to pitch in. Um, man. Uh, I liked pitching at um, AT&T Park. It's now called Oracle, I believe. Yeah. Where the in San play. Francisco. Um, their mound is huge and it is not regulation. It is bigger than the rest. So I like pitching on that mound and it's a big field. So, you know, sometimes you just have to throw it down the middle and say, here, Get a deep fly out, you know. So I love pitching there. Um, I'm from San Diego, so I love pitching at Petco Park. Um, it's a stadium I grew up going to, and I fell in love with the game of baseball at. Um, I love pitching at Bush Stadium in St. Louis because it's it's a cathedral there, and the fans the fans are always loud and they're always amazing. And um, there's a lot of good stadiums, but I think I think if I were to choose one, I think it would be Oracle Park. Oracle Park. All right, on to the double. I want to know your two funniest teammates on the Pirates. Man. Um, Edgar Santana is one of the funniest humans I've ever met. Um, man. Um, who else is really funny? I, I'm he's my funny. He's my funniest. So I'll count him twice. I hear Santana twice, two times. All right. And another double question would be the two best spots to eat in Pittsburgh. Um, there is a restaurant in the Strip District called uh, Deluca's. It's like a diner spot, um, diner breakfast food. It's amazing. That's a great spot. Um, there's another spot. Um, in Pittsburgh um, called uh, Meat and Potatoes. It's a barbecue spot downtown Pittsburgh. I mean, there's a lot of good food in Pittsburgh. There's a lot of great spots. Um, but those, those, I think, are my favorite, too. Those are the two. All right. On to the triple. We talked a lot of baseball. What are your three favorite things to do or three favorite activities outside of baseball? Man, um, I love – hanging out with my family. <laughs> I love hanging out with my kids when I can, um, when I'm home. Um, I love to read. I love science fiction, especially. Um, I love, uh, I'm not much of a gamer, but there's a, there's a couple that I love that I love playing and I love playing with other guys. Um, but those, those really are my, my three. I love riding, I got a bike for the season, so I love riding my bike around. <laughs> That's great. <laughs> what, what are the games you've been playing with the guys? Um, love Mario Party. Love Mario Party on the Switch, and uh, Mario Kart's a classic. Oh, yeah. yeah. Tra backtrack to your family a little bit. Usually you go about five, six months 
traveling between on the road, pitching every night, 162 games is a grind. What was it like being able to be home in the beginning of the spring with your wife and three kids? Uh, it was amazing. It was amazing because we didn't know how long we were going to get together. Um, so we kind of just took every day as, as a gigantic blessing that, you know, we're get, we get to be together in times that we didn't think we were going to be together. Um, so it was really awesome. I got to see my, my little girl go from crawling to standing to walking and the time at home in real time instead of like I see her for five days and I – for five days, I don't see her. And then I see her again for five days. It's just, it's just standing up and walking. So um, it was really amazing. And it's, it's time that we didn't think we were going to get and that we were super grateful to, to get because of, because of COVID. On to the home run question. From, you've been playing baseball your whole life. From Little League up till now, your best or a couple of your best baseball memories? Um, I'll never forget my debut. Uh, my big league debut, I um, pitched three innings, um, came in relief, pitched three innings, and got the win. Um, we had a home run in the bottom of the eighth to go ahead and, and win it, um, which was amazing. And I got to share a moment with my dad after the game where, you know, we were hugging and crying like babies. And um, that's a memory I'll never forget. Um, another memory I'll never forget is um, – winning like our district in high school um, where we all played together for four years and our senior year, we won it. And it was, it was a really amazing moment for a lot of us guys. Um, but those two moments, especially um, I'll never forget. Awesome. And I've got to ask, you've got it in your pictures on my, the beard. I love the beard. How big, how long did you let it go in quarantine? Everyone was growing out the hair. Everyone's growing out the beards. <laughs> This, this is about as long as it, get, as it gets now. I used to have a really long one, and um, it was just time to retire that. So this is about as long as it gets. I need to trim it up now. It looks a little scraggly, but, uh, but this is about as long as it gets. All right, well, thank you so much for coming on the show once again. It's our very special guest, Trevor Williams. I'm Jacob Kronberg. Thanks for tuning in.